That's right, this is Brian Walter from the American Storytellers, and today do I got a, a treat for you. Now, anybody that knows me knows I burn water. I am not a cook, but I want to show you my secret weapon. Right here. It's a big old bowl, 7.8 liters of beautiful plastic type of wear. Notice how nice and blue it is, how perfectly round it is. It works great. But my real, my real secret weapon is right here. The Tupperware Microwavable Pressure Cooker. See that? Beautiful. I tell you, this is like a miracle from Jesus. Jesus created the man that made this, or the lady, whoever it may be, that made this. But they should get a Nobel Peace Prize for one of these things here. I tell you what. So, we're going to use this and we're going to make some delicious, delicious food. Now, I was thinking, I was going to have me some uh, ostrich and rice casserole. But guess what? I couldn't get no ostrich meat. I tried looking for one outside. They're nowhere around, so that's thought, hmm, maybe an emu. But there again, I saw one at this ranch a few miles back, but that'd be like poaching, and I don't do that. I don't appreciate that. And I don't think you can get an emu license in South Dakota. So, I figure, what the heck, we just go ahead and make it out of chicken. It's almost as good as an ostrich. Tastes a little bit better than the emu. So I will figure chicken. It was easy to get. So I need in my other Tupperware container. I tell you what, let me tell you something about this. This stuff keeps things as fresh as the day it was slaughtered. There's my chicken. Put the lid on. It's nice about these. Put the lid on, slap that right in the refrigerator, and it stays good. Don't have to worry about it. Don't have to saran wrap it all up. Right here, Tupperware. So I got my chicken. We'll go through chicken and rice. That's what we'll call it. Brian's chicken and rice. So, not a whole lot of ingredients. We got the chicken. This is what, one half a chicken breast? About a pound and a half. Good chicken. And then you need, of course, cream of chicken soup. Gotta have cream of chicken soup. I could eat this right out the can. It's that good. Also need cream of mushroom. Now, see the brand? Make sure you get that brand. I'm not gonna say it online. I don't lie here. But get that brand. Because you use a cheap store brand, you can tell the difference. Top quality ingredients. And then you also need cream of celery. This is grandma's best friend. Right here, cream of celery. So you got cream, cream, and cream. Three cans. And you also need, what else goes with chicken and rice? Rice. Right here, saved perfectly in this beautiful Tupperware container. And this is, if you can read that, what's that say? Rice. Got a little label on it. What kind of rice is it? Instant. That's right, this is minute rice. Not regular rice, minute rice. Because I'm a guy and I can't cook. So I gotta use minute rice. Because I know if I use regular rice, I'd not put enough water in and I'd burn the rice when I was boiling it. Or well, I'd put too much water in and I'd get rice pieces about that big and they won't fit in the bowl. So, instant rice, minute rice. I'll use that. Then I'm gonna use this right here. What's this? It's a pig sticker or a chicken cutter, whatever you want to call it. It's a Tupperware knife. This is a chef knife, stainless steel, professional grade. It says right cheer. It's got a great nice handle. And what's nice about this knife, if you look, see how it's purple on the handle? The sheath is purple too, so I don't get mixed up with the other sheaths from the other knives. Fits right together like that there. That way I don't cut myself. So I got my knife. Oh, got one more thing I need. If I'm going to cut chicken, 
I'm not going to do it on my counter. That'll leave knife marks. And it make my knife dull. So I need a cutting board. Now, I could use a wood cutting board, but guess what? When you got chicken, you put it on a cutting board, guess what happens? All that chicken juice soaks into the wood and it stays there. No matter how much you try to wash it out, it stays there. And that's how you get salmonella. Salmonella. In your cutting boards. You never get them clean. Well, and I could use glass cutting board. But then what happens, I'm doing this, and you know me, I'm a klutz. And I turn, boom, knock it over, hit the ground, smash it all over the place. I look at it, try to go get something, step right in and cut my foot. Then I got to go to the doctor to amputate my foot off. I'm not going to do that. So what am I going to do? Right here. Plastic Tupperware cutting board. What's nice about this is the salmonella juices can't get inside here. It's plastic. It can't go in. I could drop it. It ain't going to break. So that means I don't get my foot cut off. So, Tupperware cutting board. All my utensils. Except for this mason jar that holds my Meliella. Everything else is Tupperware. Now, men out there, I know the ladies like the Tupperware. But I'm talking to you men out there. This is it right here. Tupperware. It lasts forever. Most of us all got a lifetime guarantee. If it cracks, breaks, you got a guarantee to get it replaced for free. You can't beat that. That's cost saving, cost effective. Remember that, free, free replacement. Now, if you take your cigarette and you put it out in and burn it, well, then of course they're not going to replace that. But if it warps or whatever from the dishwasher, something to that effect, or you wash it in the sink and you use straight hot water like I do, and you let it sit there for an hour and it melts because the water's boiling hot, well, then, you know, that's a different story. But normal wear and tear use, it could be 25 years later and you still get replaced. You get a lid, like lids. You get the lids replaced free. Like, see this right here? That's holding rice. See, you have 25 years of taking this on and off and on and off and on and off. And for some reason, we don't know why an act of God, maybe, it cracks. Lid cracks. Guess what? You can go to any Tupperware consultant in the planet. Because I don't think they're off planet yet. But anywhere in the planet, and you can get them replaced absolutely free. So, Tupperware, lifetime warranty. Task rubber made if they can do that? I don't think so. Anywho, so now we're going to do. Oh, what did I forget? I forgot. Measuring cups. I'm going to go old school on you right here. Old school Tupperware. I think um, my wife bought these right around the time we got married. We've been married 27 years. Still got two sets of them even. Because she likes to be cooking up a storm. So she needs two sets. So we're going to be using one of these. Because we're going to need some measure out the rice. Anyhow. I'm going to adjust the camera here in a second and I'll show you my flaying skills. So I'll be right back. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to take my knife. Kind of hard to see how the camera looks, but there's my knife. My cutting board. And my ostrich meat. I mean, my chicken meat. So, I got me about a pound and a half here. And you got to cut it up into chunks. Don't shred it. Don't cut a little tiny piece. Make it into chunks. Now you want to make sure you don't cut your fingers off. I knew a guy cut his fingers off, had tips of his fingers off, had them sewn back on again. It wasn't a pretty sight. I'm a lefty, so I'm going to cut it this way. Kids, if you're doing this at home, make sure you have a parent supervision. If you go ahead and cut them. Look at that. Cutting them nice. Got there.
Look at that. Oh, that's some beautiful, beautiful chicken. Colonel only wish he had chicken like that. Farm raised, antibiotic free, free range chicken. Now, if you don't want to use free range chicken, you can get corporate chicken. It's just as good. I don't care what they say. I can't taste. I can't hardly taste the difference. But this right here is free range. How do I know it's free range? Because I went out on a range and freed it. It was a captivity. So I'm gonna cut this up. Chunk, 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 chunk. Look at that. Oh, that's beautiful. Cutting up, working perfect on this Tupperware cutting board. Oh, look at that. Works perfect. No cutting fingers, no breaking glass, no foot getting chopped off or amputated. Just make sure you don't amputate a finger. Because that wouldn't be good. It's hard to pick your nose with no finger. So, we'll cut that up. There we go. And I got me some chicken. And like I said, you can use chicken, emu, ostrich, pheasant. I don't know how pheasant would taste. Pheasant and rice. Maybe it might be good. Crow. Cut this all up here. Let me cut it all up. See a little bit of fat right there on that? I'm going to take that off because I, you know, I'm a lean, mean fat machine and I don't like extra fat in my food because... That's how you get cholesterol. And then the next thing you know, you're out there mowing the yard, and boom, heart attack. And uh, since I won't go to the doctor, I make sure I don't have too much cholesterol. Because then the wife will get mad at me. So we'll cut that up. Look at all that beautiful, beautiful savory chicken. So now that I got the chicken done, I'm going to take that and go to my magic machine created by someone that was created by Jesus Father God and I'm gonna put this right in here you just throw it in there that's all you gotta do you don't have to range it nicely you don't have to put it in alphabetical order or size order just throw it in there we'll get in there we'll level it out a little bit though so it's kind of even you can't, I mean, if you want to arrange it, you can. I just don't see what the purpose would be. So there we go. Look at that. Beautiful, beautiful arrangement. I should have been a florist or something. I don't know. Home, home interior designer chef. Gordon Ramsay, you wish you were as good as me. Within, if I had Tupperware all the time, every time, oh, I'd have my own show. And Gordon Ramsay would be out of business. So now I got my chicken. Once I got that, I'm gonna back the camera back up and see what we can come up with. So now here's the deal. I cut the chicken, which means I got chicken juices, salmon lava juices all over my hands. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use some hand wash, antibacterial hand wash. If you wanna know the brand, I am me and I'll let you know. Another great product. I'm not gonna cross pollinate the products here if at all possible so if you want to know I can give you some I can give you some pointers on that product too so anyway I'm gonna turn on the hot water and I'm gonna wash my hands I'll get the sand oil off my hands always remember cleanliness is next to godliness so keep clean wash your hands After you wash them, wring them off a little bit, but they're still wet, so you gotta dry them off. So grab a little towel, dish towel, bath towel, washcloth, something that's dry. Something that'll soak in the moisture so it gets off your hands and into the cloth. Now, once you use that, don't use this to dry the dishes with after you just wiped your hands. That's just gross. Anyway. So I did that. Now it comes time for some prepping. I'm gonna prep with cream of chicken, cream of mushroom, oh that's so good, cream of mushroom soup, and cream of celery. 
I tell you what, if it wasn't for cream of mushroom soup, I probably would have starved when I was a kid. And I like these. Now, you can use a can opener. Tupperware's got a great can opener. It goes on here and opens it up and cuts it so that you don't get this sharp edge, but I'm in a hurry. I'll just pop the top. Kind of use to that, popping the top. Pop that off like that. Lick that up. Mmm, yummy. Take that and pour it into the bowl. Missy! Yeah. What's this bowl called? Is this a that's a bowl? Yeah. That's right, that's a bowl. This is a that's a bowl. Tupperware, that's a bowl. That's right, it's a bowl. That's a bowl. So you go ahead and put that in there. Let's see. Try to get some out as much as you can. Get all of it out. If you have a spatula, let me put this in the sink. That's all salmonella juice in it. Salmonella juice. So put that in there. Try to keep it all in the bowl. Once that's done, throw the can away. Now I'm going to go with the cream of mushroom. Oh, that texture of that mushroom is just delicious. Now when you're doing your cans, you want to make sure that you don't have any dents or dings or knives because that's how you get botulism. Because if the dent gets in the can, it can be a little tiny, tiny pinhole. And air gets in there and that's where you get botulism. The way to tell if you got botulism or not is after you pour it out of the can and there's a little black spot around that hole or that dent, that means you got botulism. So don't use that food. You have to start all over again. I learned that in Miss Severson's, Mrs. Severson's uh, cooking class back in Mobile, South Dakota in high school. Probably junior high. Cooking class. Do they have cooking classes anymore? I don't know. They should. I think they call them culinary now. Not just cooking. Anyway, scrape off as much of that cream of mushroom soup off the lid as you possibly can because you don't want to waste highly, not even barely, a nanogram. That cleaned off, toss the lid, that way it's out of the way, nobody gets cut. Go ahead and drop that in there. Bang it around a little bit, make sure it all stays in there and not on the wall. And like I said, if you got a spatula, you ring it out, get every bit of delicious drop of that. There we go. That's good. Now I just now I just lick my fingers. Now I gotta wash my hands again. Soap, wash her up, scrub, lather up. What's that? Rinse, lather, repeat. Rinse, lather, repeat. Wash them up real good. That was straight out of water. That gets a little hot there. Use warm or hot water because then that kills the germs too off. Dry your hands again. Back to business. One more. Cream of celery. Celery, the greatest vegetable God ever created. I could eat stalks and stalks of it. Eat with peanut butter, without peanut butter, cheese whiz. That's a good way to eat celery. So, there we go. Put that in there. If that gets a little tough, like, see, that's kind of chunky. Chunky and funky like a monkey, as Dusty Rhodes would say. So what I'm going to do is slide in here. Let me close that up. Slide in here. This one. Grab me a spoon. And I'm going to wring all that out. Look at that. Golden goodness. Cream of celery. Dig deep down in there, get down in the crevices. There we go, no black spots, no dents. We're good to go. Take the dirty one, put it in the sink. But first, but first, rinse it off. There ain't nothing worse when you hand wash dishes, because I don't need no dishwasher. I got a dishwasher, but she don't like it when I leave dishes laying around. She's going to kill me for that one. Anyway, rinse it off first. That way when you put it in the sink, it ain't filthy. And then when you fill up the dishwater, you got old crusted cream of celery juices in there. So now, we got 
can of cream of mushroom, cream of chicken, cream of celery. Now I'll take my Tupperware spoon, lifetime guarantee, mix it all up real good. Blend it, fold it, mix it. Just don't whisk it. You want to fold it and turn it and turn it and fold it and fold it and turn it to all together. And you got one nice big three cups of soup. Cream of goodness soup. That's what I could call it. I could, you know what? I could put this in a microwave just like this. Not in this dish, but in a microwavable dish, which Tupperware has. And uh, cook that up and just eat that right there, maybe with a couple crackers. But for now, we'll just put that like that. Okay, so now I got it all mixed up. Now I take this magic golden goodness and uh, evaluate where we're at. <coughs> anyway, I'll be right back once we get everything evaluated. You know, I said we're going to evaluate things. Well, I'm glad I evaluated things because guess what I forgot to do? See, this is why I said I'm not a cook. I poured the chair the cream of chicken, cream of celery, cream of rice soup in there and threw the cans in the garbage. Guess what I forgot? Agua. H2O. Water. I gotta put a can of water in there. But I'm not gonna dig in the garbage can and clean one of those cans out. That's just gross. So what I do? I search high and low and look what I found. Old school Tupperware measuring cup. This one right here has got milliliters and ounces and cups. So, whether you're American or British or Canadian or Japanese or El Salvadorian or Antarctican, you got it covered. You got your standard U.S. whatever they call it and you got your metric. So you're good to go. We're going to use the standard ounces. No, we're going to use cups. What am I talking about? Ounces. I'm going to have to add that and I'm not going to do that. So I'm thinking about, what, one and a half cups of water? That's about a can, right? That's about a can of water. One and a half? Maybe I'll just do over one now that I think about it. So, anyway, we're going to put, after I thought about it and figured it out, we'll do one cup of water. Now, don't do hot water. Just regular old cold water is all you need. And don't be going and getting a bottle of Dasani or water or whatever water you like in a bottle. And what do they call that? Uh, smart water. No, just use plain old tap water. It's good and delicious. The government goes and they clean it for you. And it don't cost a whole lot. Now, when you measure, you don't want to just go, oh yeah, that's a cup, right? Because you could be holding it crooked. And the level will be off. See, hold it this way. And go like that. Oh, that's more than a cup. Oh, that's less than a cup. Oh, that's more than a cup. You got to level her out. Level her out. See, I got too much in there. I'm going to pour a touch out. Get her down to a cup. That sounds a little bit more. Now I know this is level because uh, my grandfather was a carpenter and he showed me how to level stuff. He got Looks level to me. So now I'm going to take this. I need a cup of water. And was it two and a half cups of rice? That's what I said, two cups of rice. See, I told you. So, one thing about this Tupperware lid, look at that lid, it's got a pop top, so I can pop a top. Pop a top again. Two and a half cups. I grab me the old school Tupperware one cup, and I pour that in here. And pour it and pour it till you get right up to the top. And make sure it's level. You don't want too much, too little. Perfect. Perfect. Kurt Henning, Mr. Perfect, perfect. That's one cup. 
One more. With that right there. Mr. Perfect, perfect. Now you got to be careful. You don't want to do this outside. You don't. Because if you spill some rice and gets on the ground, then you know what happens? The birds fly around. They see the rice laying on the ground. They come down there, eat it up. And then they go get a drink of water. That rice fills up in their stomach and blows them up. You don't want to do that. So do it on the inside. Two cups of rice. All done. Cup of water. Pour that in there like that here. Now we got to do some mixing up again. Grab your bowl and turn and turn and churn. Then you're like in the old days making butter and you're churning and you're churning and you're churning. Mix it up nice and good. Get all the stuff on the side of the bowl. Scoop it down. Don't want to leave it laying up there. Don't leave it all lonely. That rice likes to be with his brother. So keep that down there. And they love getting mixed in with the cream of chicken, cream of rice, and cream of celery soup. Put that in there and mix it up real good. Look at how delicious that looks. I bend it more, but then it spilled all over the floor. And I don't want to get it off the floor. So mix that up real good. Now that that's all mixed up real good, now comes the hard part. Take your chicken that you had done earlier in here, right? Lay it down. Take your that's a bowl, because that's a bowl. And you pour it in your pressure cooker. Look at that, delish, delish. My wish is to it, for it to be delish. Got that out of that's a bowl, because that's a bowl. And now that she's set there, you take your that's a bowl, what do you do? Before you do anything else, you rinse it off. That way that stuff don't get dry and crusty on there, and then when you wash it, it takes difficulty to get it off. So you grab one of these things right here. It's a nifty little vention. And you spray in the bowl. It gets the stuff off the sides. Cleans it up real good. And make sure you got your sink trap in there and your strainer. So when you dump it, all the rice don't go down the drain. I use kind of a mesh thing that catches all that rice and throw it in the trash and go. Now look at that. Look at this. That bowl, that's a bowl, is all clean now, so when you go to wash it, you don't got rice floating in your dishwater. I'm going to set that over here with some other dirty dishes. Put this over here with some other dirty dishes. i got to put this over there, too. So I ain't got too bad for dirty dishes. So now i got that sitting there. Now I've got my spoon. i got to rinse my spoon off. You can use this little doohickey one more time. Spray her down. Get all the stuff off, goes into that little wire mesh trap, catches all. Use it to spray your sink clean, and catches all down the bottom, and we're ready to go. That's done. Put that with the dirty dishes. Okay, remember this one? That's what I use for the rice? That means it's dirty. Don't put it back in the cupboard just because it doesn't look dirty. You put food in it. Put it with the dirty dishes so you can wash it. Okay? But the other ones... The other ones you can put back in the cover. Now, I use this, but what did I use it? Water. So, what do I do with it? Do I put it back in the cover? Or do I put it with the dirty dishes? It's water. What am I going to wash it with? Water? But I'm still going to put it with the dirty dishes because I fingered it all up. And then the germs from my hands, if I have any, will get on here and then it's sitting in the cupboard and then the salmonella manila grows. Next thing you know, you have a chia pet coming out of here or something. So we're going to put that with the dirty dishes too. It only takes a second to wash with dish soap, okay? The rice, we're done with that. We can close the top and then we can put that away. Oh, I need a drink. Nectar of the gods, Melilla. Now, see the glass? This is called recycling. Now, my mom and my dad, my dearly departed father, they made jelly. And once he made his homemade jelly, we'd eat the jelly. He'd give some to us because, you know, that's what, that's what generous people do. They do things. That's what you do when you love somebody. You help them out. You give them things. 
He made a bunch of jelly and he gave us some because he knew I love it. Choked cherry jelly. <laughs> anyway, bless his soul. I got done eating the jelly, but I want to do it with the glass, the jar. I'm not going to throw it away. I'm going to save it for if we ever make some more jelly. But in the meantime, it holds liquids. So I'm using it as a glass. Perfect. You got to think, people. Ecological friendly. Reuse, recycle. All right, so we got that out of the way. Now, we have our pressure cooker. We got the food in there. It's ready to go, right? But what's the pressure cooker need? What's a pressure cooker need? It needs a lid to create pressure. How does it create pressure? That's easy. Right in here, see this right here? There's a seal. It goes all the way around this and that seals the inside from the outside. So when you got it sealed and locked, it builds up pressure. That's why they call it a pressure cooker. It heats up the air, it heats up everything and pressurizes the inside. And that force cooks everything really quick. So, take the lid. And let's see if we can get it on camera here. Over here maybe, huh? Maybe I have to adjust a little bit here. It's going to be a bumpy ride, but you guys survive it. There we go. Something like that there. Okay. So, we got this in here. Put the lid on. Make sure your seal's in there. Lid slides on. Find some grooves. There's grooves in here. Grooves there, grooves here. It goes on the groove. Like the New York groove by Ace Freely, right there. And it's got some directions. It says on and off. You lock it in. You got to make sure you lock it in, other pressure will pop the top off. So I go like that, lock her in. Drop that down. She's ready to go. Now, what do we do next? I'll show you. Let's see if I can grab this and do this all at once. Maybe not. Because I got the camera on a tripod and the microwave's a little far away. So, I'm going to cut right here and then I'll show you back up at the microwave. All right. Here, I'm back. All right, see this here. We got to put this in here, the microwave. So I'm going to take this, make sure it's locked down. Now, what's nice about this, if you look over here, it's got a little doohickey up here, right there. When this gets pressurized, that thing comes up. It tells you it's under pressure. Kind of like David Bowie, you're under pressure. And it's got another deal over here, same type of deal. When this goes down, after you cook it, take it out. When this goes down, that means there's no more pressure in it, which means it's safe to open. So, right now, we're going to put this in the microwave. Just take it, slide it in there. And this is where the real magic begins, I tell you what. 25 minutes. 25 Zero, zero. 25 minutes and you hit start and that's all she is to it now in 25 minutes so I'll come back it'll be an instant for you because I'm not gonna let you sit and watch a microwave go for 25 minutes that would just be stupid anyway so once that gets done I'll pull it out we'll take a look and I'll take a taste and see if you like it you know maybe we could do a smell of vision or taste of vision I don't know how that's gonna work We'll have to call Willy Wonka and see what he can come up with. Anyway, see you in a little bit. Bye. Real quick, since I'm a guy and I forget things, the knife. I forgot to put the knife by the dirty dishes. Now, when you got a knife in a sheath, what you need to do, since it's got crusties on it, it's got salmon lalaman on it from the chicken, right? So we're going to wash that off with hot water and soap. Soap. Put a little bit on there, clean the rag, clean it up, get the salmon now off, rinse it off, rinse it off so you got most of it off. Now, you don't want to set, since I do, uh, I wash, I wash in the sink, right? I wash in the sink. I don't have a dishwasher. Oh, I got a dishwasher, but like I said, she gets mad when I call her that. So what I do is I take my knife, the dull side 
against your hand, the sharp side away. And I get all the water off. Why am I getting the water off? It's like, oh, it's almost clean. Well, it's close, but it ain't close enough. Got salmonella on it. Take the sheath. Slide it back in the sheath. Make sure you got it the right way. And then put it on the counter. That way nobody cuts. And the little ones, if you got little ones that crawl up here and they're looking for candy and they can't see over and they grab that knife, they're going to cut themselves. Or your teenager, you pick it up, move it out of the way, slip drop it right on his foot. He cut his toes off. We don't want, you don't want a kid running around people calling him no toe. So, put the sheath on the blade. Oh, turn the water off too. Don't waste water. It's a precious resource. Anyway, it's still cooking. It's only been a couple minutes. So, I'm going to cut out here. Go smoke a cigarette. I don't know. Have some more Mellow Yellow. And uh, we'll be back when she's done. While it's going on, you can pause it if you want. And go to www.astrocks.com and check out my band's website. If not, just wait and we'll be back up again. Later. Bye. All right. I know it seems like a second, but it's been 20 minutes and it's done. So now I got to pull her out of the microwave over there, way over yonder, over yonder. I'm going to go pull it out and we're going to put it here on the counter. So here we go. Now look at this. No oven mitts. It's warm, but it's not hot. It's warm, but it's not hot. Look at that. Just like that. Straight out the microwave. I don't know if you can see the steam kind of coming out the little vent hole there. Where the pressurizer is. So, now we're going to take it. We're going to set it down. I got it on a little mat here. Uh, right here. Now, if you look. Right here. There's a little valve that's sticking up. It'll pop up. And when that goes down, then we can unlock it. You don't want to unlock it now, because you unlock it now, go, and you'll have chicken and rice all over the ceiling, and burned and scalded hands, and then you got to get a skin graft. And you don't want to do that to take the skin off your back and put it on your arms. And then you have back hair on your arms. You don't want that. So make sure we let it cool down, let the steam come out, and the pressurize get off of it. Once that gets off, it's just nothing but delicious goodness. And we'll show you when that comes up. So we're going to take a few minutes to let this pressure depressurize, kind of like the astronauts. When they come back from space, they got to depressurize like on Star Trek or something like that. So we're going to let this uh, be like uh, Captain Spock, or Mr. Spock and Captain Kirk, and depressurize. And once that's done, then we'll show you some more. Back in a bit. All right. The little doohickey, little valve thing here, drop down. This one's down, down, this one's down so it's not pressurized. So now what we got to do, unlock it, lift this up like that here. See how that unlocks? Now, once it's unlocked, I can open it up. Now you want to make sure, you don't want to open it up in front of you because it's still steaming here. And if you open it up in front of you, you get steam in the face. If you're wearing glasses, they get fogged up and then you bump your head on the counter because you can't see nothing and you knock yourself out you fall over hit your back of the head on the refrigerator or the stove and then you get a contusion and a concussion and then you have to go to the doctor get an MRI and then it becomes really expensive chicken and rice so you don't want to do that so turn this like this here see I got my finger here thumb here and you just want to turn it turn it turn it turn it turn it till it unlocks and right here there's two arrows one on top, one down the bottom, you line them up. So like this, the arrows are far apart. You turn it, and the arrows get together and they line up. That means she's free as a bird. And you take it and you open it up, and the steam comes out the back side. And you open it up, and she's all done. Now look at the moisture in there, if you can see that. That's from the steam. From the microwave, steamed it up, steam cook it. Heat cook it, man. You got like this, and then we gotta go get a something to stir it with. Find me my tongue. Right. 
Tupperware, my Tupperware spoon, and then we stir it. Cause it, it it's not it's not liquidy, but it's not quite thick, and it thickens up as you go along here. So I'm just gonna stir it up and get that that chicken goodness that's down on the bottom. I'm gonna bring it around. That way it's not layered down on the bottom, and then when you get some rice, you get some chicken in it. Like this. See all that steam coming out. This is hot, but oh, it smells so good. Once you get that done, then you're going to go get a plate. And I'm going to come over this way out of camera and get a plate. Now, there's all different kinds of plates, but what kind of plate you want to use? You can use Tupperware plates. These are beautiful, beautiful golden plates. Or old school. This is old school. And I tell you how old school this is. See, there's kind of some scratches in it. That's because I used to use it when I'd make a bologna sandwich. I put the bread and the bologna and the cheese and the America Whip and the anchovies on there. And then put another piece of bread on top. And then I'd cut it with a knife. And you're not supposed to use a steak knife on plastic. You know that. But. I'm a guy, what do you expect? But they're still good, they haven't delaminated yet. These things are over 20 years old and they still work just as good as the day we got them. But anyway, I'm gonna set that back over here. I'm gonna take the golden delicious Tupperware plate and I'm gonna take the Tupperware spoon and you can serve it in this if you want or you can come over get a what's this called it's a smaller that's a bowl that's right that's a bowl and you can take this out put it in here and then put this on the table and serve it to all your youngins or your parents or whoever you have over say look at me I made supper all by my lonesome and man I tell you what you do this for your wife oh boy she'd be happy she might even wash the dishes for you. Maybe. But she'll be happy that you took the time and the effort and the forethought to say, Honey, I love you. And I love you so much, I'm going to cook you something to eat because you're too skinny. So, you could put it in here, but for today's purposes, we're just going to leave it in a pressure cooker. Take your plate and your golden delicious plate and you take a spoonful of golden delicious goodness called chicken and rice and you just set her on there like that here set her on here like that just like that get a big old chunk of chicken or emu or ostrich if you use ostrich make sure you don't have any feathers in there and there you go now you can garnish this on the side with some green beans that would be really good on there some broccoli, eh, I don't like broccoli, but you could put some on there. Or any other kind of vegetable. Maybe some mixed corn, fruit, um, or mixed vegetables. It's got corn and uh, carrots in there and uh, lima beans or something. Put on the side. And then you got your chicken and rice and your vegetables. And then you can have jello or something like that for dessert. But anyway, I'm going to move this up here a little bit. That's how I make chicken and rice. So, hope you enjoyed this little video. The progress, like I said, I burn water, so if I can make this, anybody can make it. Look, I'll even take a test, taste test, and show you it's not poisonous. It's kind of warm yet, but. Mm mm, good. That's right. So, once again, thanks for watching. If you have any questions about Tupperware, let me know. Instant message me or instant message my wife, Melissa Walter. Because I tell you right now, she, make, she sells Tupperware. And every piece of Tupperware you guys buy from her gives me money so I can buy a guitar. Or guitar strings or drumsticks or harmonicas or drum heads or something. 
And uh, so, the more Tupperware you buy, the happier I am. Thanks you for watching. Y'all have a good one. Love y'all and God bless.